Welcome to American History Notes, where I discuss things I've learned about American history, discuss them with you, and then uh, if you're interested in anything I say, uh, you should look it up and study it yourself. I hope you'll become conversant in American history or just be curious. Um, so we'll begin today. I'm still on architecture, art, music, things like that, literature. So today I want to start with Lewis Henry Sullivan, whose basic belief was that form follows function. You might have heard that. Designs his first skyscraper. The Wainwright Building, he becomes the leading figure in the Chicago School of Architecture in 1889. In 1901, Frank Lloyd Wright completes the lecture, The Art and Craft of a Machine, detailing his thoughts on architecture. In 1906, he'll design Oak Park Unity Temple near Chicago. In 1911, he will design his own home near Spring Green, Wisconsin, called Taliesin, which will be rebuilt twice. In 1915, Wright designs the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo, Japan. Two years later, he will do the Roby House in Chicago. The Woolworth Building, designed by Cass Gilbert, goes up in New York City in 1913. The Chicago Tribune Building is designed by Raymond Hood in 1923. Historian and critic Lewis Mumford will publish his history of architecture, Sticks and Bones, in 1924. The Empire State Building is constructed between 1929 and 1931 on the former site of the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City. In literature, in 1888, Edward Bellamy writes, looking backward, which is, it, is, is his view on how the coming 20th century will be affected by what he perceives to be economic inequality. Henry James publishes the Aspirin Papers. Under the pseudonym Finn, writer Ernest Lawrence Thayer publishes the baseball poem, Casey at the Bat. You might have heard that. Uh, the following year, Mark Twain publishes a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. From 89 through 91, historian Henry James publishes the nine-volume History of the United States of America during the administrations of Thomas Jefferson and James Madison. In 1890, the Literary Digest, a current events periodical, is published by I.K. Funk in New York City. It will be subsumed, that's absorbed, in 1938 by Time Magazine. William Dean Howes publishes A Hazard of New Fortunes about social conscience in 1890. The next year, he publishes Criticism and Fiction, championing realism and aesthetic freedom in writing, which will lead to a complete lack of moral restraint in literature. In 1894, Mark Twain publishes The Tragedy of Puddinghead Wilson, detailing the unfairness to a fictional uh, mulatto slave. Stephen Crane publishes his masterpiece, The Red Badge of Courage, in 1895. The 24-year-old had no war experience from which to draw on. It's amazing. Um, Black poet Paul Lawrence Dunbar publishes the collections Lyrics of a Lowly Life of Lowly Life in 1896 with introduction by Howells. In the same year, novelist Sarah Orne Jewett publishes The Country Appointed Furs. In 1897, Edward Arlington Robinson published Richard Corey about an upstanding citizen and gentleman who kills himself unexpectedly. Crane publishes the model for short stories, Stephen Crane, uh, The Open Boat in 1898 after following the Cuban Revolution against Spain. Magazines, newspapers, and secular books are beginning to consume more and more time that people of faith had previously devoted to reading the Bible in their homes. Henry James publishes the most, most famous, The Turn of the Screw in 1898, while journalist Finley Peter Dunn begins his Mr. Dooley satires for the Chicago Post in that year. In 1900, poet and scholar William Vaughn Moody publishes the political poem and ode in time of hesitation because of the dedication of, of the St. Gaudens Monument to Colonel Robert Gould Shaw, the white officer who led the first black enlisted regiment to fight in the Civil War. Shaw's outfit was made famous today in the movie Glory, released in 1989. Booker T. Washington publishes Up From Slavery about his rise from being a slave to co-found the Tuskegee Institute in 1900 at the urging of Frank Doubleday. Also in the same year, L. Frank Baum publishes The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, which also will become the subject of a famous movie. Black scholar and teacher W.E.B. Du Bois in 1903, Du Bois publishes The Souls of Black Folk as a, <coughs> excuse me, essays and sketches. In 1904, muckraker Lincoln Steffens publishes The Shame of the Cities in McClure's Magazine. Cartoonist Windsor McKay develops the early comic strip Little Nemo in Slumberland, the first of many he will create in 1905. And Edith Wharton publishes The House of Mirth. In 1918, McKay will produce the first feature-length feature -length animated film, The Sinking of the Lusitania, having already produced Gertie the Dinosaur and Little Nemo. In 1906, short story writer William Sidney Porter, known as O. Henry, 
begins with a story collection, The Four Million, which contains the famous, his famous The Gift of the Magi. The first daily comic strip, Mr. Mutt, appears in the San Francisco Chronicle. Created by Bud Fisher, will be renamed Mutt and Jeff. The cowboy hero Hopalong Cassidy makes his first appearance in the novel Bar 20 by writer Clarence E. Mulford. Several books follow, and then more than 60 movies, starting in 1935, starring William Boyd. Between 1908 and 1923, essayist and journalist H.L. Mencken establishes his reputation for classic commentary wit and anti-Christian views. He will eventually publish the American language about the difference between American and British English. Eventually, he'll edit the influential periodical, The American Mercury. In 1911, Theodore Dreiser publishes his, most, his famous novel about a German immigrant becoming pregnant out of wedlock named Jenny Gerhardt. In that year, Edith Wharton publishes the difficult and improbable Ethan Fromm. In 1912, black poet and novelist James Weldon publishes the autobiography of an ex-colored man about a light-skinned black man who passes for white. Harriet Monroe founds a literary magazine, Poetry in Chicago, and Poet Robinson Jeffers publishes his first collection of poems, Flagons and Apples, and later will publish Dear Judas and Be Angry at the Sun. We're going to stop there. There's a lot of material. I took the time to look at each of these things, see if I could find the book, uh, you know, uh, free online or a short story or look at the old magazine. It's just fascinating to just take the names that I'm throwing out here and look up this stuff. Um, and uh, I just hope you'll study American history and uh, enjoy it. Thank you very much. Have a good day.